In today's video, we're trying out something inspired by Rosanna Pancino to see if we can hydro dip a cake. All right, Nate, what are we doing? Uh, not long ago, I saw a video by Rosanna Pensino, and she is fantastic and makes lots of very cool stuff. Uh, I think we still have some poop emoji molds yes. that she sent to us. And she had a video where she hydro dipped a cake. And I was interested because we've done lots of hydro dipping stuff, but we haven't done it with anything edible because all of our hydro dipping stuff has been with spray paint and you don't want to eat that. Here's the basic idea. We've done several hydro dipping videos in the past, but never with anything edible. So today we wanted to see if we could hydro dip a cake using mirror glaze icing. I was hoping to do more of an opaque mm -hmm. coloring because when we use spray paint, like it usually goes on and just covers whatever is beneath it. And so I wanted to try using a different kind of coloring. Instead of the oil-based dyes that she used, which float on water, I wanted to try using the mirror glaze frost, I don't know if you can call it frosting. It's more of a gel, yeah. really. Gel icing. Icing, yeah, icing is a good word for it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that mirror glaze icing does not float on water even a little bit. It sinks right down through it immediately. Mm -hmm. So we needed something a little higher density and what we ended up with, corn syrup. Corn syrup is more dense than mirror glaze icing. So here is the general plan. We're going to make our mirror glaze icing in a few different colors. Maybe we'll make a batch of it and then divide it up and add some different colors to it. And then we'll do it. I think we'll try some small scale tests with it, but the idea is to pour the icing on top of corn syrup, maybe draw some fun patterns in it, and then see if we can hydro dip. I don't know if it's hydro dip. It's Corn syrup dip. Fructose dip. So if you're not familiar with what a mirror glaze icing is that you might see on cake sometimes, it is this very, very thin layer of heated chocolate, sweetened condensed milk, candy melts, just kind of depending on what sort of colors you're trying to get. And then this is usually poured over the top of a very smooth surfaced cake. I've seen this done on round cakes. I've seen it done on bubble cakes. It looks beautiful. And some people will actually take multiple colors and sort of drizzle them together and you get these beautiful marbling patterns. We're kind of doing it the opposite way now. We're flipping it. Instead of pouring it on, we're going to be dipping stuff into it. This is gonna be amazing. Basically jello with white chocolate mixed into mm -hmm. it. And it just goes on really shiny when you pour it onto a smooth surface. We're not gonna be pouring it on, we're gonna be dipping stuff into it, so I don't know exactly how the finish is gonna turn out, but we're gonna try it. Uh, and the first step is to make the mirror glaze base. It's not, I mean, you're on the right track. Good. It's not quite. Hi? All right. We need nine gelatin envelopes. Make sure that you have the correct size. Gelatin envelopes do come in different sizes, so when I was doing this, I actually had larger packets. The packets are about double this size. They do come in larger amounts. Yeah, it says three envelopes, but three quarters of an ounce each. So we are going to be using nine of them to give okay. us the equivalent volume. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be using the coldest water possible, and then we're gonna be pouring the gelatin into it. Uh, that's called blooming your gelatin, and that is gonna be how we get this going so you don't end up with chunks of white gelatin in your soupy chocolate mess and nothing works and you wanna cry because you just wasted a lot of gelatin. I feel confident in both of us that with our powers combined, we can probably make this work. Behold the sort of bloomed gelatin slurry. The problem is that you have to make sure that you've got all those white chunks disappeared, because that's gonna be what'll cause a problem during the heating process. Now, this is the sugar, water, and some corn syrup. We heat this up just until it's boiling, and at that point, we turn off the heat and add all of our bloomed gelatin into it and stir it until it's completely dissolved. Once it's dissolved, we're going to pour that into our white chocolate and sweetened condensed milk mixture. So, a lot of transferring from one thing to the next here. <laughs> We're just transferring everything here so when we pour the hot mixture in, there's no risk of it doing anything to the bowl. I don't think it's hot enough that it would damage the bowl. Here's the fun part. This is when we have to start being very careful not to get bubbles into anything or try and get them out. So I'm gonna pour from a little higher than usual. Now the reason that we're not just going to stir it is again, we don't want bubbles to get into this. The bubbles 
are what's going to cause little tiny bumps in the surface of our mirror glaze. So you let it sit, you let all the bubbles rise to the surface, you sort of skim them off the top, and then you use an immersion blender, which goes down underneath the surface of the mixture and just blends from the bottom up. That way, no air can get into it. So if you've never seen one, this is an immersion blender. So the blades are on the bottom. This piece can be switched out. There's a whisk that goes with it, but you put it underneath and you don't want to catch any bubble here. So you kind of lower it in sideways. The goal here is just to be patient. If you lift it up, if you move too fast, you can still end up with bubbles because it'll break the surface. This pretty, pretty clean white is starting to rise to the surface and that's what I wanted. Be patient, take your time, and it'll stay that pretty clean color. Well, I want to try sort of a, a very small scale test. Okay. I just have some corn syrup okay. in this little cup here, and okay. there's no color added to this yet. I'm literally just pouring our mirror glaze onto this. Try making a little chocolate pop. Yeah. I'm just gonna try passing it all the way down through the glaze into the corn syrup and see if any of it sticks to it. You know, when you're hydro dipping, it's super easy to wash away all of the extra <laughs> paint on the surface. A little slower with corn syrup, but look at wow! that. Wow! So as a uh, super basic proof of concept, I'm fairly happy with that. In theory, pouring it through a strainer like this is gonna help get rid of more bubbles. So now I'm just gonna scoop some off and make it different colors. We want to have pretty much as much corn syrup as we can fit in here while still having room for the cake itself to go in without causing it to uh, spill over too much. So the white is mostly going to be behind the color and not nearly as visible, at least that's the idea. I'm just trying to add a little bit more coverage. I'm gonna try and dip this down in yep. and then I'll need to just clear everything off from the sides. Here goes. Nice. I would say just focus on the side next to me. Oh, all right, well, it didn't go the direction I wanted it to. But look at that! <laughs> yes! Go, go, go. It kind of floats, that's nice. Yeah. Just... My time. All right, scrape away. I'm just gonna pull it out and see how it looks. Oh. It's gorgeous. It's not the pattern you want in it, but it's gorgeous. I mean, it's neat. It is really neat, okay. It did lose some, a, a fair amount of the definition. We'd probably have to experiment with this for yes. weeks before we got I also clear think results of the best way. We're working with, with cakes that are a little too large because the thing is, is it's so much easier when you can pull the item down and then scoop up out in a clear spot. Yeah. I have pieces that are about the size of ice cubes ready to go, and we also have some, I have six flower shapes about this big. So we have, I like I brought enough so that we could do lots of fun stuff. To keep the colored gelatins from cooling down too much, I've been microwaving them anytime it seems like they're getting too thick. And that might be cooking something inside so that it's not gonna pour quite the same, but so far it seems to be working well enough. <laughs> Ones. Those are going to be the winners here. Okay. Some success. We know that these are terrible. If you want to see the most brilliantly, beautifully hydro dip cake that might be the first hydro dip cake ever, go check out her channel. This was hydro dipping soft mousse that was frozen into corn syrup with a mirror glaze. This is a little different. But as a concept, like I kind of like these results. Like They're this so looks fun. really cool. Uh, let's talk about your chocolate lollipop here. 
Huh. Okay, well, let's it's look like at the It's like a chocolate layers. with some jelly on the outside. But I want to see, it's actually a very smooth coating. I was wondering if it was going to be lumpy or anything. Nope, that's pretty uniform. So the chocolates, everything's melting now because I used a recipe for this sort of cake mousse that I've done in the past, and I think last time I must have just doubled or tripled the gelatin in it. Didn't do that this time. In fact, I didn't even add any. I added extra chocolate to try and make it a little bit denser. That was my mistake. So there's a lot of things that we could do to improve this, but for a proof of concept in an hour and a half. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm curious how thick our gelatin layer is. It's thicker than we'd want, but it's not as bad as I thought it was. That may not have set correctly, but it's delicious. Guys, that's it for today. If you like watching stuff like this, go ahead and hit that circle to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.